Live with ClickOrlando.com. This is News 6 at 9, getting results. Good morning on this Friday. I'm Julie Broughton. I'm glad you're with us. I'm Bridget Ellison. Candace Campos is in for Tom tonight. We have uh, so many things mm -hmm. going on, but to today we will do our Florida or anywhere oh, yeah. else, which is always a fun end to our Friday. Yes, wrap <laughs> it up on a positive <laughs> note and get to see people whose days aren't going as well as some else. crazy yeah. stories. And of course, the Central Florida Zoo is a place that especially people with children absolutely love. Well, they just hit a big fundraising goal that means that they get to continue staying open so we will check in on that in just a little bit. First though as the highly transmittable Delta variant of the coronavirus continues to spread one of the leading producers of the vaccine is asking permission to administer a third shot. And their study found it gives you five to ten times more protection against the Delta variant but the CDC says people who are fully vaccinated are protected. News 6's Troy Campbell reports for Advent Health where cases are going up. And that was Troy Campbell reporting. The CDC director also said more than 99% of COVID-19 deaths are people who were not vaccinated. And Advent Health says it submitted 1,000 positive COVID tests. Half of those came back as being a variant. And with the number of Delta variant cases increasing, more mobile vaccination sites will roll out in Orange County. The first one will be held at Inglewood Neighborhood Center along La Costa Drive starting Monday. It's timely for students who need shots before going back to school next month. Really, really convenient. It will help and it will improve like to get the vaccines for the, the whole people like faster. The State Department says so far more than 28,000 children have been fully vaccinated in Orange County. That means about 40% of the county's population remains unvaccinated. Developing right now a deadly crash involving a car and an Orlando fire rescue ambulance. This happened just before 3 a.m. along Edgewater Drive and Smith Street in the College Park area. And News 6's Mark Lehman is live from that scene that's been active all morning. This crash has caused road closures for hours, Mark. Yeah, streets have been shut down for more than six hours, and by the looks of everything, it's going to be a while longer before everything is able to reopen. Take a look at what's going on here behind me. A traffic pole is now in the middle of Smith Street, and that ambulance was just removed from the building that it was pushed through from this uh, high speed impact. Now, here's a look at the car involved and the devastating damage after the crash. It was towed away about 90 minutes ago, and since then, crews have been working to remove debris and make repairs. It was just before at 3 this morning when Orlando police say the car slammed into an Orlando fire rescue unit on Edgewater Drive. Police say that car burst into flames and the EMTs and the ambulance were actually able to uh, extinguish the fire uh, with fire extinguishers and help the people inside. Sadly, one person in the car died. Two others were seriously hurt. A few minutes ago, we spoke with a nearby business owner who says speed is sometimes a problem in this area. Yeah, just to wonder how fast it was hit to do a 180 and then back into a building. And then when you see the car that was pretty much demolished, um, it's definitely shocking. And here's another look at that car. The medical examiner removing the body earlier this morning. Now, as for the EMTs, we're told that they had minor injuries. The two were taken to the hospital as a precaution, but are, but are okay. And as we come back out here live, we're also told that there was no patient inside this or Orlando Fire Department ambulance uh, when the crash happened. Now here's what's going on right now. Again, Edgewater Drive and Smith Street remain shut down. There's still a lot of uh, debris that needs to be removed out here. Repairs need to be made, uh, certainly to the business where the uh, ambulance crashed into. And also uh, a traffic signal needs to be replaced on Smith Street. So we're gonna stay out here throughout the morning as the work continues, but it looks like it's going to be a little while longer before everything's able to reopen here uh, in College Park. For now, reporting live in Orlando. Mark Lehman getting results news six. Mark, thank you. Also developing the search for a suspect is underway after a deadly shooting in Daytona Beach. The victim was found early this morning at the Northwood Village 2 apartments off 9th Street. Ezzy Castro joins us from police headquarters. Ezzy, thank you. In just hours, SpaceX's Cargan Drago capsule will aim to splash down off the coast of Florida. And the Dragon departed the ISS yesterday. When it returns, it'll bring back 5,300 pounds of cargo and experiments. The capsule set to splash down in the Gulf south of Tallahassee tonight at 1130. And so many exciting things are happening not long afterward. 
the billionaire Richard Branson will go up in his Virgin Galactic spacecraft. The mission has two goals, a big step toward creating space tourism and Branson beating fellow billionaire Jeff Bezos to the punch by nine days. Bezos' Blue Origin suborbital flight is set for July 20th. Branson and the three people going along with him for the ride are scheduled to lift off after 9 a.m. Sunday Eastern time from his company's space flight headquarters in New Mexico. And of course, coverage will be right here for you on News 6 and ClickOrlando.com. While you're there, we have five things you should know about Virgin Galactic's first full crewed space flight. That is on ClickOrlando.com splash space. What a life to worry about beating other billionaires into space. <laughs> you Just took something. Me. Everyone needs something to do, right? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> nice hobby there. <laughs> Let's get a look at how the roads are doing right now. Traffic safety expert Trooper Steve has your pinpoint traffic brought to you by Napleton Automotive. And we have seen some big problems out there this morning, Yes, Steve. we have seen some big problems this morning. It was kind of a crazy Friday. Things are slowly thinning out. So... This was an absolute mess a little while ago. Obviously, right now, things look pretty good. This is the Florida Turnpike over by State Road 528. Earlier this morning, a huge multi-car crash in the southbound lanes right at that consulate exit. FHP got out there along with other units, and they have cleaned that up. So we're no longer seeing any delays anywhere on the Florida Turnpike. Just a second ago, Mark Lehman gave a great update on the crash over at the Edgewater and Smith Street, right in the center of College Park. What you're looking at here there's a live shot there of that scene where that ambulance was right inside that truck. Unfortunately, this is a fatal crash investigation, so it takes quite some time to uh, clear things up and wrap up the uh, administrative portion of this. You can see quite a large scene here, power poles down on the roadway, and now the construction starts to kind of fix all this. So as of right now, north and southbound lanes out here completely shut down at Edgewater. Your westbound lanes of Smith Street are shut down. A lot of people think, well, it's east and west. Westbound Princeton. No, westbound is Smith. Eastbound is Princeton out here. So what most people are using right now is Westmoreland to get around. Keep in mind, this will be closed for at least another hour, two hours, maybe three. Going to cause some major issues in the city of Orlando. Make sure you're paying attention. I-4 up to speed over at 434. Not seeing any issues there. In Seminole, you're clear here. Just found a crash a little while ago southbound on 429. Crashes aren't stopping today. Right there at Ocoee Popka Road going to be exit 29. So be careful as you're traveling southbound here from Apopka. This is south of 414, so south of Maitland Boulevard between the Florida Turnpike. You can see we're looking at about a two-mile backup here. Be careful, please increase your following distance. We don't need any secondary crashes. Lake County, you guys are the only ones behaving this morning. There are currently no crashes in the county of Lake from Tavares to Mount Dora, west towards Leesburg. Currently, we're checking out pretty good. Guys, back to you. All right, thanks, Trooper Steve. On average, more than 1,000 people are still moving to Orange County every week. The pandemic did delay the mayor's plan to ease the growing pains felt on our roads. So will the mayor bring back his push to hike the sales tax? And what would we get if voters say yes? News 6's Nadine Giannis takes a look in our latest installment of Boomtown. Nadine, thank you. The Central Florida Zoo and Botanical Gardens is the main attraction of Seminole County. Due to the pandemic closures, there was a huge financial setback last year for the zoo, so they had to look for help. It's a big number, 2.5 million at a time where, you know, the majority of the world is facing trouble. We're happy to report the Central Florida Zoo was able to meet that goal, how they were able to get results up next. You're watching News 6, getting results. Here's a live look from our Orlando Health Camera. We'll be right back of the news is brought to you by ace the helpful place with bridget ellison julie brought meteorologist candace campos and traffic safety expert trooper steve this is news six at 9 a.m getting results Last year, the Central Florida Zoo was among many businesses forced to close during the pandemic, creating a deficit in funding used to care for the animals. Today, they've reached a fundraising goal. News 6's Carolina Cardona has the good news at the zoo. We love, love a lemur. Yes, two new lemurs. Ooh, we yeah. would like to hear that. Well, you know, meteorologist Troy Bridges is in for Candace. It's time for the meme of the day, Troy. Oh, yes. <laughs> As we head into the weekend, we are ready for the weekend, aren't we? It has been a week, but when it's officially summer, but you're ready for fall. <laughs> mm, I know I'm ready. Ooh, yeah. that looks scary right there. At the <laughs> it's been a long week for those of you in the weather department. <laughs> it has. And this Any is from too. Simon in Oviedo. 
Nice. Some cool looking clouds there. Yeah, we've seen a good bit of cloud cover, especially yesterday around 1 p.m. We had those storms with a ton of lightning across much of central Florida. Today, a later onset. So the rain will come a little later in the afternoon, and that means we'll have more time to heat up. Of course, we are watching still the latest, can you believe, on Tropical Storm Elsa. When will she get out of the place? Well, she's out of here at least, but we are watching Elsa move up into New York, eventually today moving away from New York and then moving right into Boston. So New England likely to deal with some flooding in the coming hours as well as New York City. Right now we're at 79 in Orlando. at 79 in Ocala. Right now 81 in Cocoa Beach and in Melbourne. It's 81 right now at Daytona Beach. So a warm start at 920 in the morning. Close to 80 everywhere in Central Florida. But here's a look at the Pinpoint Accurate Forecast Hour by Hour. Your Hour by Hour forecast brought to you by Family Physicians Group. And today we heat up to 92 degrees, which is our average high for this time of year. Notice around lunchtime on through one o'clock rain chances at 10% to up to 30% by 1 p.m. And then we bump rain chances up to 60% by 4 p.m. So mainly after two rain chances go up as the east and west coast sea breezes come together and then battle it out through the evening hours. And that means as late as nine o'clock, we could have some of those heavier downpours and thunderstorms to deal with. Rain chances fairly high at 60% for Saturday and Sunday as well. But again, mainly into the afternoon as we pinpoint the sea breezes. Starting the work week next week, Monday already? No, let's not think of that a 40% chance for rain Monday and Tuesday as well as Wednesday with highs close to 90 across the board so today the hottest but not that much hotter than we'll see through the weekend ladies back to you all right Troy those weekends do go fast in any emergency seconds matter and in Volusia County first responders are able to get out the door faster it's all thanks to a new program bypassing calls we'll show you how it's getting results just ahead First though, running on empty, most drivers have played the game. How far can I go before I have to fill up my gas tank? <laughs> ClickOrlando.com's Brianna Bowles has a guide to keep in mind the next time you find yourself on E. Save big with the latest deals at ClickOrlando.com slash deals. There's always something new happening at our theme parks. You can get caught up on all the new attractions, festivals, and celebrations with In the Loop Theme Park Scoops, the newsletter. It comes out every Friday. New six producer Landon McReynolds compiles the biggest stories happening at our attractions into one newsletter for you. Sign up at clickorlando.com slash newsletters. Summertime is, of course, a popular time to hit the road. Road trips have gotten a major revival since COVID-19 hit the world. But right now, vacations have gotten more expensive, and gas is part of the reason why. Prices have been holding steady around $3 a gallon here in Central Florida. So the fewer visits to the pump, the better. And that begs the question, how far can your vehicle go on empty? Brianna Bowles is here now to show us a guide from ClickOrlando.com. This has been quite the talker because I think we all have our own horror stories. But before we get to that, there are a couple things worth mentioning. For starters, aside from the obvious problems running out of gas can entail, I mean, there's getting stranded on the side of a busy highway somewhere miles from civilization or when it's blazing hot and you have kids or pets in the car. Driving on empty can also do damage to your vehicle. According to yourmechanic.com, driving with a low amount of fuel in your gas tank can damage your fuel pump due to any debris or contamination in the gas, which can just naturally settle at the bottom of the tank and be sent through the pump. If you do it once, it's probably not that big of a deal, but it can be harmful if you're doing it regularly. Okay, I'm moving on, but I'm just saying my dad would be very proud of me for that rant. We all had to learn that before we were allowed to drive. So how trusty is that gas gauge? Well, in short, not very. When your vehicle offers an approximation of how many miles you have until empty, that is based on the average mileage your vehicle has attained while previously on the road. So it may not be accurate to your current driving conditions. So finally, back to our original question, how far can you actually drive on E? Well. The answer depends on a few things, your vehicle, your driving habits, and road conditions. There's no doubt that sometimes you get in a situation in which you have no choice but to ride out on E until you reach the next gas station. This information from your mechanic will give you a better idea of exactly what you're dealing with. So we have a chart and a lengthy list of car models. We won't go over them all, but just a few. You can see them here. A large vehicle, say a Ford F-150, you have 39 miles remaining when low fuel warning is on. A Jeep Cherokee, 32 miles. The car with the most miles remaining, 
a Toyota Prius. So after you're done scrolling, be sure to vote in our poll below here at the bottom of this story. And if you don't see your car listed in this web story, we have included a link so you can further your search. And one last thing, if you notice that you're reaching empty quicker than you should, or you have leaking fuel, be sure to have your car inspected as soon as possible. The thing is, ladies, we really don't want to know how far you can go. Right. On these, right. You don't want to learn that. I no. definitely it test up. it. Frequently, mm -hmm. so I mean, my dad would be upset as well. <laughs> Mine too. Yeah. A new program in Volusia County's dispatch center is speeding up response times in emergencies. First responders can get on the road and head to certain types of calls within seconds now, rather than minutes. News Six's Molly Reed shows us how it's getting results for people in the county. Well, just this week, a second Orange County deputy was disciplined for his actions on TikTok. This is now prompting the sheriff's office to consider making changes. We'll explain coming up. Plus, people are looking at it and going, well, oh, that won't happen to me. Old buildings aren't bad. It just depends on the maintenance program that they've had. The Surfside condo collapse is raising questions on how high rises are cared for. News 6 investigates what that means for buyers and sellers in Central Florida. You're watching News 6 at 9, getting results for St. Cloud, Claremont, and all of Central Florida on air and on the News 6 mobile app. We'll be right back. It's hurricane season. But Chief Meteorologist Tom Sorrells and the Pinpoint Weather Team are here for you. Because when the tropics heat up, we stay focused. No hype, no noise. Just a calm, consistent, accurate weather team tracking the hurricane's path with Pinpoint Doppler radar and 3D views bring us inside the storm to help keep you and your family safe. This hurricane season, stay prepared with the New 6 Pinpoint Weather Team and the Hurricane Tracker app. New 6, getting results. This is News 6 at 9, getting results. Crews have recovered four more bodies at the scene of the condo collapse in Surfside, bringing the total number of deaths to 64. Workers are vowing to continue combing the rubble around the clock until the remaining 76 people unaccounted for are recovered. And this tragedy has heightened scrutiny of the safety of high-rises. And now condo owners across Florida are wondering if their buildings are safe. But what about buyers? News 6 investigator Maris Badcock set out to find out if what happened in Surfside is impacting Florida's housing market. Mike, thank you. The state's first licensed home for children with special needs is right here in Orlando. And the mission remains the same today. Create a family atmosphere where everyone is loved. There's never a bad day here, never. I don't care what kind of mood you're in, you can come here and you will be laughing. We visit the Russell home up next and explain how for them getting results is a lifelong responsibility. You're watching News 6, getting results for Deltona, Christmas and all of Central Florida on the air and on the News 6 mobile app. We'll be right back. with Bridget Ellison, Julie Broughton, meteorologist Candace Campos, and traffic safety expert Trooper Steve. This is News 6 at 9 a.m. Getting results. In 1951, the Russell Home for Atypical Children became the first of its kind in Florida, a licensed home for children with special needs. News 6 viewer Bonnie Bright wrote us to say it's such an uplifting place to visit with a wonderful backstory. It's worth a nomination and an award. So we went to learn more, and as Matt Austin shows us, it is still a special place. I like what she said. There's never a bad day yes. there. You could just feel all mm -hmm. the joy and love in the Russell home. Now, it is completely supported by private donations. If you'd like to help, we've included more information for you on clickorlando.com. Let's take a live look outside for you now. This is our Launch Credit Union camera at the port. A nice start to our Friday. And we're still watching the problems Elsa's causing up north now, Troy. That's right. In the northeast U.S., millions are under tropical storm warnings and flash flood watches as Elsa moves up the east coast. This video shows flooding on the New York subway tracks. According to the National Hurricane Center, much of the northeast will likely see two to four inches of rain by the weekend.
Now we're getting a new look at the damage Elsa caused right here in Florida. Surveillance video shows the moment a tornado hit Jacksonville on Wednesday. You can briefly see the funnel and then seconds later debris starts flying everywhere before a power outage knocked out the camera. Amazing stuff. Now some intense moments during an aftershock in Central California, not far from the Nevada border. A rock slide happened just hours after a 6.0 quake that rattled the region. There were no reports of any injuries. Now that's the weather around the world. Let's pinpoint your central Florida forecast for Leesburg and for MIMS as we take it to that forecast high near 90 for coastal and for inland zones. And we're going to see a later onset of the rain and storms. And so for the Orlando Metro and a large part of Orange County, temperatures are going to be warming into the 90s. 92 will be the afternoon high temperature for today, which is our average and rain chances go up to 60% this afternoon and early evening. So the rain will be a factor, but again, because it'll start after 2 p.m., we'll have a chance to heat up a little bit more than we did yesterday. Yesterday, those storms started early as early as 1 p.m. in a large part of Central Florida, even in the noon hour. So today, if you've got stuff to do, get out and do it at the noon hour. Now, here's a check of your personalized pinpoint forecast as we talk more about Elsa. The last time I want to talk about Elsa, but Elsa continues to move to the northeast, heading to Boston now. And as it does, it's pulling away some of that tropical moisture, but we'll be back in our typical summer pattern with the east and west coast sea breezes. But before that, up to our average high in Orlando, getting up to 92, close to 90 for coastal and inland spots. Now, if you have an event or a special day you'd like me or Candace to pinpoint, send us your photos or videos along with the city date, your name, and why it's a special occasion. Just head on over to clickorlando.com slash personalized pinpoint to submit them. Look at the high rain chances into the weekend at 60% as we see the sea breeze storms fire up each day. So today, late in the afternoon after 2 p.m. and then ongoing through your weekend after 2 p.m. We'll see the chances for rain and notice high temperatures up near 90 across the board. Rain chance is a little lower next week at 40% Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and then 30% by Thursday. So getting hot, but a little drier by the end of next week. Ladies, back to you. All right, Troy, thank you. If you come across a strange news headline online, you can probably guess if it happened in Florida before even clicking on it. They make an appearance every Friday after the break. We'll guess if it happened in Florida or someplace else. You're watching News 6, getting results for Satellite Beach, New Smyrna Beach, and all of Central Florida. On the air and on the News 6 mobile app, we'll be right back. An airplane fuel cap falls from the sky, landing right in a local family's backyard. They could have been killed. Where it came from was a mystery. It took forever to get a response from the FAA. Up until now. And we found out this wasn't the first time this has happened. I'm New 6 investigator Eric Sandoval. See what we uncovered about a certain model of airplane flying out of Orlando International Airport. Coming up tonight on New 6 at 5. Hmm, a certain model. I wonder what it is. We have to wait till five, and we'll find in. out. Yes, mm. we love good summer desserts, and we're getting results for dinner with key lime cheesecake. Yes. Mm. So here it is. The Mama Loves Food blog says it's delicious, and it's Looks easier delicious. to make than it seems. It's super delicious and great for those summer get-togethers. Find the full recipe at clickorlando.com under the food section. Isn't everything easier to make than it seems? Well, I don't what, think at so. At least she says so, she, right? And according Every to her, time. that's her story. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know it's Friday, and it's time for a little game show on News 6 at 9. We take a look at some of the weird stories from the week. Mm. There's always something wild going on. That's why we have our Strange Florida newsletter. So to help us out, to receive and Brianna Voles from ClickOrlando.com are joining us, and Troy is here to play as well, which always makes blessed. things extra exciting. It does so make blessed. things <laughs> very interesting. <laughs> All right, so we'll repeat the uh, rule since Troy is here. Oh, so here's oh. how it works. He and I. Him. He's not going to follow him anyway. <laughs> no. So we'll, Bree and I will tell you a few stories. You ladies and gentlemen, guess if the weird situation happened here or anywhere else. Bree, what you got? All right, well, this is one of the scariest things I I can imagine actual nightmares are made of this stuff okay being bitten by a python Ooh. while sitting on the toilet Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah that actually Ooh. happened a 65 year old man went to use the bathroom oh, no. when he says he ah. felt a pinch where? Oh, no. No. Leave it at that yeah yeah no, it's not. <laughs> 
turns out, feel it? this <laughs> python, who was thought to have escaped a neighbor's apartment, somehow slid through the drains and up into the man's home. Mm. Uninvited, that is so else. rude. Thankfully, the man is okay, and we're told the snake Stop. was expertly removed Cleaned up. Do not take it there, Steve. Just do I know, not. right? Right. You and return stop. to its owner. All right. So, ladies mm. and gentlemen, ladies, where does this happen? First? Sure. I like that we added that they cleaned the snake. Oh, of course. Oh, yeah. Yes. Afterwards. <laughs> I'll say somewhere else. Okay. I'll say Florida. I'm definitely going to say Florida because it sounds like Florida. Nope. Mm. What? Oh. Nope. It was we Austria. Had, we had this in the news and I thought it was Florida. Oh. Right. You do the weather. Because That's it okay. was something that would happen here. Right. Yeah, right. Would. 100%. Yeah. Yes. So, as a member of law enforcement, I really cannot with this next story. It, it like bothers me. Many like to add customizations to their cars, trick oh. them out, if you will. I guess that's what the kids say. Mm. But this is gonna be an absolute nope from me. Look at this, yes. Oh. That is a satellite dish on the car's mm -hmm. hood. I can't even imagine what he would need that Why? for. It's not like you need Sirius Satellite for that, right? Right. You don't need high-speed internet or TV when you're driving, Troy. Well, the and car already no, has it, probably. it won't satisfy your need for speed in your car. It won't make you go any faster. So we this was posted on sure. an agency's Facebook where the trooper said, Sir, I stopped you today for the visual obstruction on your hood. Does it not block you while you're driving? To which mm. the driver responded, get this. Only when I make right turns. Oh. Gosh, I wish I wrote this ticket. Needless to say, the decision did lead to a ticket. Oh. Okay. Well, well, did this happen in Florida or anywhere else in the world? It moral? sounds like Florida, but I think I saw mountains in the background. And yes, oh. the mountains are a good context <laughs> clue. So we'll all, I'll speak for the group. We'll all yeah. go okay. someplace else. All right. Good job. Happening in California. <laughs> it job. did sound like Florida, though. Yes. These it do sound did. very Florida. All right. This last story. Construction zones are blocked off for a reason. It means you're not supposed to go inside, right? We know that. And you're definitely not supposed to swing off equipment, quote, like a stripper. But that is what one man is accused of doing, apparently breaking the equipment and causing more than $14,000 in damage. No, we don't have video on this. From his little stunt. <laughs> what yeah. did he do again? What did he do? Uh, you, um, yeah, he did no. something Swinging like in like a wrecking ball, I yeah. guess. Oh. Yes. So now he faces vandalism charges. Oh, okay. well, did you take away the video so we can't use context clues? Well, like my, right, right. Well, you know, my thing punished? is, if they're naked, as I say, yeah, it's definitely naked. Florida, but I don't yeah. know that this one was, so I'm not sure. I'll say somewhere else. I'll that? say Florida. Mm, gosh. Well, I'll the say Tennessee. <laughs> Extra credit for there you. There you go. <laughs> it was in the prompter. Yes, it was Tennessee, but we could have guessed. All right, guys, you can find stories like this and more where click Orlando.com back to you that was a good roundup that was yes, fun and I made so sure fun. not to look at the prompter when I did my guess well I was looking and then it just appeared <laughs> it was so right there yeah, the universe okay. wanted me to see it it did That's do that what, okay or whoever's behind the wall <laughs> thanks so much for joining us this morning on news six at nine and we'll be back at noon with more news and weather we break news at click Orlando.com gorgeous look at Daytona Beach <laughs> Woohoo! let's party I'll be right back Join Rach and John for an hour packed with food and easy peasy pasta night. Drop the mic! Plus grilling tips next Rachel. Rachel Ray, today at 10 on News 6.